It's time to feel the rage. Welcome to Film Rage, where we talk movies in theaters, streaming, and classic films as well. Directors and actors beware, as you cannot hide from the rage. My name is Bryce, and I'm part of the Film Rage crew, which also includes Jim. Hello, Jim. Hello, Bryce. Hey, hey. And also, we have the Merman, who... Not unlike the U.S. Postal Service, always delivers. That's right. So with the introductions out of the way, let's rage on. Yes, yes, yes. Well, thanks to all who've been supporting us. If you love our independent podcast, please support us and join the growing Film Rage community by joining our membership at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Film Rage YYC. All members get special episodes and content only for members. And all members that sign up will get a limited edition Film Rage merch item, which are quite fabulous. If you cannot commit to a membership, you can still buy us a terrible movie rental and we will watch it because we love to have the rage. Shout out back to our Canadian listeners. They've overtaken U.S. as we enter the stretch for the month of October, Halloween. And thanks, kids. Movies are back at Canyon Meadow Cinemas. We are open for your viewing pleasure with great new films opening weekly. All health-regulated protocols are in effect for a safe and enjoyable experience. And don't forget, we should be your first choice for your next birthday party or special event. Can't make it to the cinema? We got you covered. Order concessions from our online store, and you can either choose curbside pickup or get them delivered via Skip the Dishes, Uber Eats, or DoorDash. For more details, go to canyonmeadowscinemas.ca. Here at CMC, we would like to thank you for your continued support. And we are looking forward to seeing you at the movies. I just want to mention, it's time to dance. You are correct, sir. Streaming, we've been streaming, we've been streaming, and Bryce, we're what? We're streaming, Jim. Not our Murray, though he didn't want to stream. No streaming. Hmm. Hmm. So this week we streamed. On Shudder, oh, dum, 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 the medium, and not like as in large, no. medium, and small. No, 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 different type of medium. It is the medium is a supernatural thriller from Thailand. It starts out very effectively as it has a genuine feel of a documentary which adds to the believability of the events that follow. Unfortunately, the initial documentary feel morphs into uh, more of a found footage feel that has kind of grown tired over the years, at least for me. Um, I loved the first third of the film and liked the remainder. The development of the main characters at the start of the film was very well done. We get introduced to a shaman exorcist in the form of Auntie Nim. We also are introduced to her niece, Mink, who displays some strange behavior as she she becomes inhabited by, I don't know how many spirits, but a whole schlack of them. A shit ton. A ton of spirits. She was getting filled with a bunch of spirit, if you know what I'm saying, throughout the movie. So much spirit. <laughs> Mink's mother Noi also appears at the first at the start. It's like, well, what's she in here? But, well, but then she becomes a greater part of the story as the yeah. film rolls along. Um, there are some shocking and genuinely creepy visuals throughout. The film unfortunately morphs from documentary style into a more found footage, as I mentioned before, sort of like Blair Witch. As the final act unfolds, we get some overused filmmaking devices. 
they relied on in the final act that kind of dampened some of the effectiveness of the closing scenes. The medium was brilliant at the start, and despite my complaints toward the end, it was still a very good horror movie. It had its share of shocking gore and intense scares. The medium was meh. Oh my. The Do we really need night vision? Medium. Again. Yes. Always. No. We always need night vision. Ugh. So the quote unquote documentary of this film seemed to me, although I did like the concept of it, did seem a little fake for a little while. I did find the acting was a little weak during the documentary side of things. So that's the side I love. Well, no, I like. don't get me wrong. I liked it. I wish it kind of stayed there. But the, they, at times, they still seemed like they were acting. And you shouldn't when you're doing a documentary. It should, it should have felt a little bit more natural. I thought Auntie Nim was natural. So, yeah. yeah, well, she was. She was great. She was Some great. But, but the other ones were kind of iffy. Yeah, she was fantastic, by the way. Um, well, up until the point where... Mink threw a kid against the wall. Yes. And then... How awesome was that? I know. I'm thinking, I might have seen the disclaimer as I watched... I actually read every single credit looking for the disclaimer that they usually have at the end of the movie where it says, no they animals harm kids. No ar- animals were harmed in the making of this film. Or in this case, no CLFs were harmed in the making of this film. No, that kid, but that to, kid was harmed. But no, to no avail. One, <laughs> one less... CLF ain't harping, harming no one, is it? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, they're expendable. Pe- people get up in arms about animals being harmed, but you can throw kids against the wall anytime you want. By now, I'm kind of dialed in, fake or not. And then shit really starts to happen. It must be said, there are some cool traditions at funerals in Thailand. Uh, A, gambling parlor. B, <laughs> Candy throwing. C, fireworks. Yeah. Murray, when I die, can you please take my body to have a funeral in Thailand? It is now the only thing that I ever want to do when I die. I don't care if you burn my body. I don't care if you bury my body. I just need to go there so that everybody can get candy and fireworks and get to gamble like we're in Vegas. You know, just get my dead ass to Thailand. Exactly. Just throw my dead ass to Thailand. Because that'll be cheap. I love how all the time we think that Mink was fired because she was incompetent uh, and not doing her job properly because which she's getting possessed. Well. Which, well, yes, it was true. There's but the so real reason yes. was because she was having sex every night with a different person on a different desk. <laughs> Just and, like, and the couch. And the couch, that's true. <laughs> yeah, so uh, let's face it, the acting in this documentary, I'm going to say quote unquote again, it isn't the greatest, but this story is so unique. I was enthralled all the way through this. It's like... With frosted mini wheats. The sweet side of me is like, what the fuck is going on with this terrible acting and evil tasteless side of the story? Mm. Then, on the other side, I'm kind of like, whoa, this is actually, you know, kind of a good story. It's unique and it's fucked up. Sweet. And and I was completely invested. I mean, who knew I would taste choose the taste of the no frosting side Mm. yeah uh the most interesting thing though to learn though i did not get that analogy at all by the way yeah i did i just took a while to get there yeah um but did anyone else know that heavenly meat in thailand is actually dog meat yeah hmm i think when i go to thailand to die i might not bring my dog just saying there is some dumb stuff in this for sure, as Bruce, as Bruce, as Bryce, already, Bruce Holland, as Bruce Holland. Oh my God, I'm losing my mind. As Bryce had already alluded to, um, but the fact that uh, Mink is possessed, um, and they didn't keep her tied up. Like I didn't get that part. I mean, 
did they not see the exorcist? Like, tie her up. She's possessed. They did tie her up. Though. Yeah, but then they, they didn't at the nighttime. They would let her out at night. No, but, <laughs> like, when let she, her out. but when she got free from the bed, she got free on her own somehow. We didn't see how No, but happened. then every night they kept showing her different things in the house. I'm like, yeah. didn't they tie her up before they went to bed? I think they just put her in the room. No, no, I saw them tie her, tie her to the... Well, the one boat. time they did, yeah. but then every night they kept showing her out, doing things in the house, different yeah. weird things. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. If they maybe have seen The Exorcist, and they would have tied her up and maybe a little stronger. Poor little Lucky, yeah. maybe still with us today. And Mom's Heavenly Meat doesn't get freezer space this week, I guess. But um, this did have... The usual tropes of found footage, as you had kind of mentioned, jump scares, demon possession, cannibalism, all wrapped up in a nice, neat Thailand deathgasm ending. Plus, you got baby eating, dog eating, night vision, creep eyes, as Bryson also said. (laughs) Uh, Cannibal blood orgies and burning your mom alive. Mm. So, yeah, we definitely got our money's worth. Ultimately... It was creepy, weird, and interesting ride with a pretty awesome ending. But all in all, it was a meh. Yeah. It was a meh. Found footage, I can't I don't think I've I don't think I can see a found footage I, I ever was, being Mondo again. Yeah, I was trying to kinda kind of play this thing out in my mind as if they just didn't do the found footage thing, didn't do the documentary style. If they're gonna do the documentary thing, keep the keep it like that the whole way through. I don't even know if that would have been a great movie, though. Yeah. What would have been a great movie is the concept was good. Yes. Everything was good in it. Yes. Other than the fact that they were relying on this found footage, which kind of really handcuffed you in how you could shoot things. And, yeah. And they try to stretch it out a little bit, and then it would be like, okay, that wouldn't really happen if this was being mm-hmm. done. So why not just scrap the whole found footage thing? Just film it like a regular movie. It had the writing behind yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It had enough scenes that would have been so good. It was good. so unique. There this, was, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a film with like this. I mean, you've seen this kind of possession type films before. Yeah. But this was completely fucked up. Like it was, it was like they incorporated, um, you know, worshiping and they, like it was just the some of the visuals were amazing. Yeah, I, I and just, the shot, the cinematography. But you're how right. good would the cinematography if they actually were. You know, if they actually had, you know what? But here's here's my guess. Yes, I, I think people sometimes do found footage because they don't have a big enough budget. And I get that, but Jesus, this, this looked pretty good. I don't think, I mean, budget could have been a, a problem, but I don't think this was a money saving uh, uh, mm. method. I think that they just decided to do it this way. Yeah, because well. it was a good looking film. Like it wasn't like a cheapo found footage. No film. This this was this had some quality behind it. Yep. I just wish they would have filmed it a little more tra- more traditionally, and it would have. Uh, I think it would have suit uh, 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 suited the story way better. We would have been able to. Some of the scenes would have been able to flesh been fleshed out better than they were. I love how you used the word fleshed out too. With, with the uh, there was a bunch of cannibalism with the way it. that they completely <laughs> handcuffed themselves by doing it the way they yeah. did it. Then. How, uh, well. I think everybody should, if you like horror, it's, you should definitely good, see this movie. Good movie. You should see this yeah, movie yeah. because it's it's pretty fucked up and, and, and it's yeah, got a and lot of goodness. And there's some scenes in it that you just you're gonna take away and you're probably gonna tell your buddies about it. It's just let alone <laughs> throwing the kid against the wall. Yeah. Was, <laughs> there was let alone. Some, there was some stuff in it that was Mondo. But yep. Uh, overall, it was mad. Okay then. So then we went to the cinemas. Yes. Did we ever? Did not that we a party? Ever. Yeah. Uh, something about whiskey in that song you're going to sing yeah. there, Mer? Well, a little backstory before we get going here is, mm-hmm. yeah, it was Friday night, and I can honestly say that was the biggest crowd I've seen in since the movie before theaters. COVID. Yeah. Like, it It was like, it took us a half an hour to get inside the theater. Just a concession. Like, it yeah. was nuts. Yeah, the well, popcorn was, line alone. I, I was so glad that, that my buddies bought me popcorn. Uh, yeah, and, I was and, like, and, and Paul, I was like, 
They like me. They really like me. And, and, and poor Bryce was at the other end of the city. Yeah. And he got caught in a traffic jam. Oh, it was horrible. And it took him an hour to get there. I was so on Deerfoot Trail it was for an, an hour. It was an adventure. We almost it, didn't make it in time. It was an adventure. I can tell and you that. And we bought our tickets like three days ahead of time and still end up in the third row. Yeah. That's right. That's as, uh, that's as busy as I've seen a theater in so, a yeah. long time. So long what we're time. saying is we saw the movie Dune, that which has did. been so well expected. And this movie has a, a lot of bearing on what happens to our undoubted Denis Villeneuve. I'm just saying. Oh, does it? Yeah, I would imagine, because if somebody rages over it, then he's he going to be off the list. Okay, well, let me talk about Dune. I have seen the future of cinema and the face of God, and his name is Denis, Vill- Denis Villeneuve. Ah, not since seeing Star Wars so many years ago, the first time in theaters, have I been so mesmerized by a film. As far as science fiction is concerned, I have now seen the perfect sci-fi film the sound music cinematography fx cgi scenery actors and story had me engulfed in this film for its complete 2.5 hours i wanted to go on for another 72 hours watching this film (laughs) plus hands motherfucking zimmer you are a fucking god the sound completely engulfed me in a sound haze of awesomeness I have goosebumps the entire movie as I was fully immersed as the music and visuals my were so synced. My goosebumps had goosebumps. They did have goosebumps. Uh, my, the, the music and visuals were so synced and perfect. Plus, seeing this in IMAX, in my opinion, was the only way to really get this full effect. I have never been more excited to see a part two of a movie. I don't ever often say that. I have read the book. I have seen 1984 version. So I know how this is all going to work out. But my soul is now synced to this film for life, just like it did with the original Star Wars so many years ago. Star Wars at the time was groundbreaking for its time. And I feel this film is going to influence every science fiction film to follow. Plus, it's official. I am madly in love with Oscar Isaac. I know I said it the other week that I was just in love with his hair when we talked about Card Counter and how amazing he slash it is. But now I'm officially in love. And not just with his fabulous hair. He's just one more thing that was perfect in this movie. No surprise, this film was a science fiction film perfection mondo and yes i know not the entire book was in this and it could have been another three hours of character development which i think a lot of the people that are fans of the book would say oh they didn't develop the characters the way the book did well no they didn't um but i feel denis brought the feel of the book of what it is it was a mondo for me i absolutely love this film (laughs) <laughs> okay. I feel like I should go next. Because, okay. you know, Dune was all right. Uh, you're mental. You know, it was very striking film visually. Mm-hmm. It was a very loud film. Yes. With a score that had guttural wails underneath piercing yes. string sounds backed yes. by tribal drums. Yes. The score also contained various chants and a low humming noise. Oh, God, that humming noise. so good. That permeated, like, every scene. I loved it. For two and a half hours. Yes. Yes. For two and a half hours. I wish it went on for 18 We also had noisy flying machines and really loud giant earthworms. Lots of various random industrial sounds as well. Don't know where the industrial sounds were coming from, but all of a sudden, clickety-clankety-clang. Along with this onslaught of noise was some clunky dialogue throughout, but it was delivered in a way that made it more effective by the collection of competent actors delivering said lines. The geopolitical story of a place with a valuable resource that has outside forces fighting to take control of it seems to be a tale that never goes away. 
It is relatable today as when it was first written in the yep. 60s. Still, this was a loud, this was loud. It was long. And even though the attention to detail in every scene and the breathtaking visuals made this very watchable, that is all they did, which makes Dune meh. Ah, oh, that's too bad. I know it's. I know you don't like loud noises, so ah, oh, it was just whispering obnoxious. And, whispering and walking doesn't make obnoxiously much noise. Obnoxiously loud. Yes, it was perfect. I was. I was. It was intensified the whole film. I was like lit on fire from moment one, and Hans Hans Zimmer. I just freaking think he nailed it. And in IMAX, no less. I was engulfed with sound and visuals the entire movie. Meh. It was motherfucking Mondo. All right, Mer, what'd you think? Did you think it was too loud? In a word, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Murray, Murray, Murray leans over in the middle of the movie. He's like, I may be getting old, but this seems really loud. <laughs> and I'm like, got this shitty and grinning on my face. And I'm like, yeah, it's really loud. <laughs> Well, as usual, I feel the need to tell a story before. Okay. Because my time. reviews are always short. Okay. Let's hear the story. Uh, this reminds me of my Star Wars Episode One uh, experience. Wait, you're talking Episode One or Episode, episode One? F- episode no, one. Episode One, Phantom Menace. Okay. In the movie theaters. Gotcha. After what, 20 years or whatever without a movie, Star Wars movie? It was like people were going bananas for that movie like before it even came out yes they thought it was going to be like awesome and i actually bought my tickets from another guy who bought a whole bunch basically he was like a scalper i paid like, i think double what the price <laughs> <laughs> nice just so i could see it on like opening night yes it took like i saw it at like three in the morning on yeah, opening night. i didn't have a car back then i took like a bus to the train, then a second bus. What theater did you see it at? Uh, way down the south there. What's it called now? It used to be called Coliseum. It's oh, some, yeah, Coliseum. Else. Now it's, it's called Coliseum. I walked into Eau Claire the but night that it, it went and, on sale. And there's and like one bus every, every hour. Hill. Anyway, so I got there, and yeah, like 45 minutes waiting outside. And I ended up with, and this wasn't like assigned seating where you buy the ticket. Like the, the actual seat number. How is this? This was uh, general admission. How does this apply to? Because you didn't have to stand I, in line I'm for these tickets. There. For, no, for forty five. Oh, okay. I had tickets, but I still had to stand in line forty five minutes to get in. Ah, uh, yes. Which was the half hour we had to wait for this one. Right. When I got in, I was in the second row. Oh, so you got to step up and this time. This was, like I said, this was not a signed scene. This was like first come first serve. Right. And forty five minutes before the movie, I still ended up in the second row, and I'm talking like. The pod racing and all the the droid battles, like in this so much second noise. row, yes. so and much yeah, noise. it was noisy. And I was in the second row. I couldn't like I like to see everything in front of me. That pod race was I don't like to have to move loud my as well. Head. Yeah, so this is very similar to what I experienced on Friday night. Okay, and now we get to we get where your now mind you, is. Now at. you get the connection. Yeah, I get this it. Reminded, I am, by so, the way, I am with Murray a hundred percent. This so reminded far. me of that of that that experience. Yes. Uh, same now, for me. Sean, same, Sean. same for me, except for with this the one was better. exception of like Star Wars and Star Trek, most sci-fi confuses the crap out of me. <laughs> and this movie was no different. Nice. The first half hour, I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like, what are these spaceships? I thought, Dune, I thought it was supposed to be t- taking place in the desert. Like, what was all this other crap? And I'm like, who's who's fighting who? What's the deal here? I'm like, they had an emperor. They had, like, armies. I'm like, is this Star Wars? And it's Dune. Know, and according to the director, yeah, it is. He said, he I quote, this is the Star Wars film that I never saw. Yeah, because the Star Wars so films were So he basically great. set out to make a different kind of but a Star Wars <clears throat> movie nonetheless. So which is what his intent was, which he succeeded, because that's what it felt like to me. Hmm. But yeah, once they got away from the city and all the spaceship battles and all that kind of stuff and go out to the desert, then it was a movie I could actually, you know, appreciate and enjoy. Nice. And of course, I can never say a bad thing about Rebecca Ferguson because I freaking love her. Yep. Uh, I don't know about this whole voice thing. Like, it seemed kind of, I don't know. It's like, it's, it's like, it's like the force, but it's the voice. They have this yes. voice. It's like the force. I'm like, oh, Okay, and again, I have never seen a Dune movie. I've never read the books. I had no idea what was going on in this film before I went to see it. 
So yeah, well, halfway through, I finally started to understand the storyline. Perfect. You got at least to halfway through before halfway you started through. to. Nice. And yeah, it was freaking loud. Yes. Like Hans Zimmer is awesome, but yes, you not yes. need to sit eight feet away from the speakers oh, I to it. listen to it. So yeah, if I had my choice, I probably would have seen it on like a Tuesday afternoon, like after it come out, and sit way at the back. Okay. That way, then I could have taken in the whole screen. Gotcha. Because there's probably a lot of stuff I missed because I was at the third row. But that is not really our fault. That's just the ticket sold out. I watched it again. And the reason... Did you watch it again? Of she did. And the reason why it was so busy there is because Dune was playing like four different screens all within about 20 minutes of each other. So it was literally the busiest night they've had in probably two years. Yes. So... So, yeah, overall, I enjoyed parts of it. Parts of it I didn't, so yeah, I have to give it a man as well. There we go. I, I watched the entire thing again because I was like, that was so meh. I must have missed something, so I watched it again. And Did you know miss what? It, no, it was still meh. Yeah, no, it's beautiful. Because I was a little tired that night, and I was like, maybe I'm just a little tired. And I've, You've I'm been just tired in general. It's been rough <clears> being. <throat> you know what? Usually being Bryce is a freaking carnival ride, but you know, last couple, well, last couple months, it's yeah, been a roller much. coaster. Yep, it's been not oh, as much. It's been a roller coaster ride from hell. It used, there was a time when people should have been like paying money to live my life, but no, those days are gone. Well, well, I, not gone, but just I know. I, I why always, am I <clears throat> why am I talking right now? I, 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 I have I a feeling that it's. Life. As much as I am the oldest one in the room, you two are just old. Got old before your time. Well, that's true. This was this was, and not- I, I've said it before. This was like watching a lacrosse game. It got it, the music started pumping, and it just yeah. drove it to the well, very end of this movie. Why they bastardize a great game like lacrosse by pumping in music and it's turning so it into good. a and turning it into a the kind of only thing better is if there was harmony. cartwheeling cart. Cartwheeling cheerleaders would have made it even better. I can't just, wait till we go to Vegas. Appreciate the they game. I want to go watch lacrosse to watch lacrosse. I don't need freaking everybody's working for the weekend pumping into my brain while they're yeah. doing it. <laughs> they wouldn't play that. And some, and some they, idiotic. No, no, it's more metal. Oh, no, it's, it's metal and rap because yeah. they want the kids to come watch. And it, it, these silly cheerleaders running up and down the aisles. Yes. Dancing around. I love cheerleaders dancing. I love. Okay, well, I, never I just want to watch the game. Cheerleaders at a hockey game. I never got that. It's like. That's the same at lacrosse. It makes no sense. Like. Football, yeah. Soccer, maybe, but it's like hockey. You know what we needed? You know what would have made this movie even more mondo than I thought it was? Was cheerleaders running up and down the aisle. Sure. And on and on that. And then on that note. Yeah, let's move on. (laughs) All right, are we moving on? Dune was meh. It was mondo. It was meh. Super mondo. Meh. Mondo. (laughs) Meh. Mondo. Meh. Now now. Vision blurring. Rage taking over. Well, well, well. My rage this week is because other than seeing the Mondo film, Dune. Yeah. I looked that up, did you? No. I was just going to say that I actually was hoping we'd see two Mondos back to back, which would have been Japanese Cube. But apparently, the planet did not want us to see Japanese Cube before Halloween. Now, does this make any sense to you? People if you're going to re- think this movie's actually called Japanese Cube. <laughs> well, it's, <laughs> it's the Japanese production of the remake of the movie Cube. Thank you. Just to or what I'm calling like, I can't find Japanese, Japanese cube, cube anywhere. anywhere. <laughs> just cube. I'm just angry. We've seen nothing but just math filled horror films this entire year. And we get to Halloween. We're like one fucking week before Halloween. And there's the only thing playing in in theaters right now is Halloween Kills. That's bogus, man. Right? We should be having Japanese cube. Should totally be having or Japanese Jap- cube, <laughs> a Japanese version of the cube, or I think they cube, should change the Japanese, name of Japanese style cube now. <laughs> I hope maybe when oh, we get like it, it, that's what it'll be called. Yeah, Japanese cube. Because people, people in 
in the U.S., I think think of the original Cube as Canadian Cube. I don't think any. I think that you're wrong. I don't know. I think they Nobody might. Nobody calls it Canadian Cube, <laughs> don't they? No, they just call it Cube. They just call it Cube. Okay. Well, I'm just angry because we need more horror movies before Halloween. Like the days of of like. Ah, oh, what's, what's in what's in theaters this week? No, not the best uh, sci-fi movie ever made. No, they'd put more horror movies. That's what they would have. Yes. Right? I'm 100% with you. You're on this bandwagon? I am. I am leading the charge. Yeah. It's you and me out front going, we want more horror before Halloween. <laughs> Evil is here tonight. Yes. Evil's here tonight. That's what we want to be chanting in yes. front of the cinemas. Well, that's my rage. Murray, what about you? Are you you mad? Are you raging because there's not enough horror movies this week? He's mad as heck and he's not going to take it anymore. I will never be mad about that. What? What? I am. What do you want to watch at Halloween? Love stories? Rom-coms? Best horror movie ever, Evil Dead. Well, there you go. It's a horror movie. Yeah, but they stopped making them. Well, they could have made another one. They could have made anything that was like Evil Dead, maybe better than Evil Dead. Shaun of the Dead? Anything dead. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> be well, honest. That's all I got. The only thing I look forward to on Halloween is the Great Pumpkin. Oh, there you go. Which mm. I was able to watch. I was thinking on Sunday. It might be doing something else with a pumpkin. It's kind of like no. heating it up in the microwave. Well, and can't then do trick or treating. Nobody comes to the house. Drilling a hole. Party in the anymore. Pump- so, yeah. I sit home and watch the Great Pumpkin. Nice. Huh, that's actually interesting. <laughs> It's kind of like uh, American, you're not, and you don't take the. It's kind of like out, American right? Pie. No, it's yeah. not. Huh. It's American Pumpkin. <laughs> that is uh, that's some food for thought. It is. It's literally food for thought. Oh, you guys. All right, stop me if you've heard this. Halloween is coming. Where are the horror movies? <laughs> Yeah, my, my rage is the same as Jim's. Is that because you read it in, in the, on the on the? No, I was gonna script? do it anyways, and then I see Jim's is like, okay, uh, nice, <laughs> nice to steal my thunder, and then I was gonna we're, come up with something synced. else. We're in sync, buddy. We're in sync. So yeah, no, I 100 percent agree. I don't understand how we could have Halloween coming up and have one stinking horror movie come out. And, and wait a minute, though. Wait. Antlers is a horror, so maybe we're going to get to yeah. see that before Halloween. Yeah, we're going to get to see that before Halloween. So okay. Maybe we're being a little tarsed here. Okay. But also, just, you know, thank goodness we got the uh, Cuff 12 hour uh, right. horror marathon coming up this Saturday night. So. Some That's those, right. Some we're going to be. I, be I believe there are still tickets available. No, there are not. No, there's not. It's I officially. believe that there are no tickets available. It's officially sold out. I just mm-hmm. got an email today saying there was limited tickets. It's and already then now Murray it's gone. Murray bought the last one. No, according to Facebook. Now sold out. Pache Boak. Yes. That's right. All right. Anyways, so that's it. It's, yeah, it's that's done. my rage. Yep. All right. Bring the, bring the Halloween. Damn it. Rage. Subsiding. Pulse. Slowing. Anger fading. Hey there. This is Frankie Sparks. And this is Scott Eisenberg. We're married. And we have a podcast called Shoot the Flick. Every week, Scott and I introduce each other to a new movie the other one has never seen. We talk about it, give our thoughts on it, and also share some behind-the-scenes fun facts. We want you guys to come along and enjoy the movies with us. Check us out on Instagram and Twitter at Shoot the Flick, and check out our weekly episodes every single Wednesday on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and pretty much anywhere else you can find a podcast. Come and listen to us now as Frankie and I shoot, shoot the, the flick. My New York peeps. New York? New York peeps. All right. Last week, there was a lot of rage. What can I say? Ben Affleck just brings it out of me. Uh oh! Love that but guy. It's time to get back to things that I love. Okay, Fun no rage for Murray this week. One reaction. of my favorite people in Hollywood, actor director Ron Howard, is promoting a new book that he wrote with his brother Clint about his famous family and growing up in Hollywood. I love Clint Howard. He's the best. If Santa is listening, by the way, that's on my wish list. Okay. 
He's lost in all of Ron Howard's accomplishments is the solid film career of his younger brother, Clint. Nice. So here then Let's do it. are my favorite I'm Clint Howard. This is now moments. Bryce's Christmas present. There you go. Holy shit, how is this happening? Me and We're, Murray have never been so simpatico ever. <laughs> ever well, in wait life. Wait see the list. You may not agree. Okay. <laughs> uh, first up, Parenthood. Yes. Probably one of the few Steve Martin films I actually like, except for Planes, Reasons, Automobiles. And no small part because it was a Ron Howard film. My grandmother thought it was too real. It was real. Uh, when the came, dildo came out, that was it. She was Keanu like, oh, Reeves man. is in it too. Or the vibrator. I don't know what it was. Keanu Reeves is not in enough things. I think we've already discussed no, he's, this. He's a parenthood. No, I'm, oh, I'm agreeing, oh. but he's not in enough things, is what oh, I just okay. said. Yes. He should anyway, have been in Dune. Uh, Clint plays the father of a Little League uh, baseball player yes. on the same team as Steve Martin's kid. When Martin's kid drops the ball, he flips out. No! He had no business being out there. No business. And later, so he actually good. tells his son, "Just go for the ball, no matter where it gets hit, because everybody else in the team sucks." <laughs> nice. This is a great role. Next up, we got the Austin Powers movies. Yes, I think he was actually in all three, and he actually had a name. He worked at NASA. Name. He worked. Yeah, he was the radar guy. Yep. Uh, yeah, it was a small part. But considering he was the radar guy who was always who always started off the penis jokes, yes, very appropriate. With Clint Howard, there are no small parts. That's, That's right. right. You remember he was in the movie. Wait a minute. Right. We are talking the mesmerizing list here shortly, so right. just saying. Next up, we have another one of Big Brother's movies, Apollo 13. Yes. Nobody benefited more from having a famous brother than Clint. <laughs> Ron cast him as one of the mission control technicians trying to get the crew home. And as usual, he had some juicy lines. Brings the uh, juice. Uh, okay, so just so you know, yeah, his name in Austin Powers Gold Member was Johnson. Yeah, Johnson. Yeah, that's right. Because they called him Johnson. But in Austin Powers, the spy, spy who shagged me, it was just Radar Operator Peters. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> See, so, so not even the same character. Uh, next up, we have one that Bryce probably won't like. Uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. I know, a Christmas film. But a Ron Howard film, and Taylor Momsen was totes adorable. Totes. Clint Howard plays the assistant to the blowhard mayor of Whoville. Clint Howard was still awesome. Besides basically repeating everything the mayor says, he seemed to be the only one who actually liked the guy. (laughs) At one point, he shaves his head after the Grinch did the same thing to the Mm -hmm. mayor. That's dedication. Clint's a god. Uh, next up, we have one. Uh, the Water Boy. Water I hesitate Boy. to put an Adam Sandler from movie on here. Oh, like come on. It's much. so good. But this film also had Ron Howard's BFF, The Fonz, in it. So. It did. Yes. Who was also so good. Plus, Clint is always memorable. Favorite quote? Look at Bobby Tackle. I haven't seen a tackle like that since Joe Montana. <laughs> Joe Montana was a quarterback, you idiot. I said Joe Montana. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Classic. Now, Clint Howard did Classic star. Classic Clint. He did star in some movies not directed by his brother. As a Halloween treat, check him out in Evil Speak, 1981. Uh-huh. Silent Night, Deadly Night, nice. 4, nice. 1990. Yes. Leprechaun 2, yes. 1994. <laughs> and The Ice Cream Man, 1995, which... Is available for free on YouTube. To I watch. haven't seen that. I guess what we'll be watching. He this basically week. plays a psycho who escapes from a, an asylum and basically likes to kill children. So yeah, it's on my watch there list. You go. It's free I YouTube. might buy one of those ice creams. Uh, or if you really want a good scare, go back and check out Clint as a creepy baby man in the original Star Trek series. Sweet. Boo. He was pretty creepy in that. That's all I got. All right. Murray, that's really too much joy for this rage-filled podcast, I have to say. It was was beautiful. All right. It's time. The moment you've all been waiting for. Or maybe you haven't been waiting for. I would would like to. Okay, so basically what we're doing today is our mesmerized list has gotten out of hand. 
We've got met so many freaking people on it that we we gotta we gotta be uh, a little more selective, let's say, when we put people on this list because it's. You can't, what's the point in having a list if you can't even go through the, the thing without forgetting what you read in the first you know, it's all the first in few. there it's, it's you just, just forget to read it but and, anyway. and anyway so just way too many names on this list so we're gonna let we're gonna uh, narrow it down however I would like to make a suggestion that everybody sitting at this table gets one veto because we put them on the mesmerized list at some point we yes. thought they were mesmerized okay i i'm on board for that actually and i don't know you, if murray's gonna be on board once for that you use the veto you can't change your mind later if someone else okay. comes off that you want i absolutely want to use that because i know the one person who i think is the best actor ever created right, murray is not going to allow to be on so i'm on board for that we all get one veto so and that and that makes them mesmerized for life. By the way, yes, you cannot touch them. They'll be a star They'll be by a their name. Little asterisk by their name. That's right. Okay, I'm right, a, I'm game. Veto? Yep. Okay, right. Mur- that means Murray's going to get to save even, somebody. I don't even know who I'm going to use. Oh, I know who I'm using because as soon as Murray does the the no, yeah, then I'll be using my I, veto. I think I know who you're using too. I think I know who I'm using too. All right. Let's, uh, who's taking the helm on this? Okay, well, I'll go off of our website, where it is. And when I come to the second, you printed it in order? Yeah, I printed it in order. Oh, there, there you go. Then the first person on your list should be J.K. Simmons. I made three copies, Jim. Perfect. I don't need a copy. I've got my device. At any rate. I'm paper-free, baby. I still think J.K. Simmons is mesmerizing? Absolutely. Mm, Okay. Okay, in. You're going to mark it on paper, though, so I can take this back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm putting a check mark by him. I'm going to use a pen that works, though. That way you'll actually be able to see the check mark. Mads Mickelson, no brainer. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Absolutely. It's a given. Viola Davis, absolutely. Absolutely. Mesmerizing Murray. Well, mesmerizing Murray. I have to abstain because I've only seen her a couple of movies, but I don't like her. Okay, abstain. I love how we abstain. I get to keep my veto. Perfect. Sweet. And Jeffrey Rush spelt wrong? Jeffrey, Joffrey Rush? Joffrey Rush. I vote yes. I vote yes, too. Yes. All right. Gary Oldman, mesmerizing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Daniel Day-Lewis, come on. He's a god. He made like six movies, but yeah. Okay, this is not eliminating anybody so far, but it's going to come. It's going to come. Kathy Bates. I'm thinking I'm I, thinking we could take her off. I She's wanna, made some stuff lately. I want to say no. Um. I say yes, but now it doesn't matter. So Kathy Bates is gone. Till you, the, so you weren't going to use your veto there? No, I'm not using my veto there. All right. Tilda Swinton? Yeah, that's a, that's a no-brainer. no-brainer. Despite the last two movies I've seen her in in the film festival, she is still mesmerizing. I will have a fist fight with anybody that tells know, me that she's not mesmerizing. Yeah. She's, so she she's, is just... I haven't approved of her I, last couple of decisions. I have so. to see... I have to see, though, if she goes against Viola Davis, then, you know, it could yes. be a problem. It'll be a bloodbath, Javier Bardem. Yeah, that's a mm, no brainer that's, for me. Yeah, it's no, well. Yeah, I'll give you that. Okay. You don't have to give us anything. Yeah. You can I, ve- you. We have you. You want to steal our vetoes now no, at the I beginning of the list? <laughs> Steve, I, Steve Buscemi. I think he's absolutely mesmerizing. Yeah, I think so too. Right. Um, wait, I just want everybody who's listening because if they're not looking at our website, I just want to tell you what the meaning of the mesmerized list is. So these are actors or actresses who are voted on by us that when they are on screen, they take over the screen no matter what is happening all the time. Basically, we are mesmerized by them whenever they are on screen. No matter how bad the movie is. That is right. No matter how bad the movie. They're still worth watching. They're still worth watching. Helena Bonham Carter. I could see her go. Like... I think she's. I think she has moments of greatness. After seeing her in the Sweeney Todd, I was like, she wasn't all that good. I she hasn't. Her. She hasn't made that great choices recently, but yeah, I'm gonna say. I like her. I like her a lot, and I think she used to be mesmerizing. I'm willing to let her go. All right, yeah, me too. Helena Barnum Carter's gone against. I say that she should absolutely stay, but I'm not going to. But apparently you're not, not letting anybody go. I'm not, the person no, that wanted no, to do this no. so far has wanted to keep everybody on no, the fucking list. No, no, no. Reese Darby. That's a given. He, if he, he should be the there for life. I think I've seen like one thing he's in. Uh, I find him funny. 
Abstain you do then. So he's on. Yes. Ben Kingsley. He's a sexy beast. He's a bit of a sexy beast. It's based on Iron Man 3. I want to take him off, but well, he's that's... pretty good in everything else. If you want Bryce to use his veto, you could throw it out there. I don't know that I'll be using my veto, but I... Well, the, I mean, the movies that I have listed here, they were Maybe a long I time would. ago. What has he done recently? Uh, he he was just in uh, Shang, yeah, Shang-Chi. Yeah, Stupid character, but he was still mesmerizing. Same stupid character from the Iron Man three. It's like okay. It sounds that. like you've got the the final word on this there, Murray. So Ben Kingsley mesmerizing or not? I would say no. All right. Wow. He's wow. Coming. Just let me think about this for a second. Cause... Are you using your veto? Because <laughs> I know how much you love Ben Kingsley. Oh I, man, I, I got a lot. Uh, of this is so. crazy. I didn't think I'd have to. No. Oh, okay. This is the most painful. Well, you can thing come back done. to it if you haven't used it. How's that? Okay, fine. Okay, Francis McDormand. Yeah, yeah, that's a given. That's a three-way. That's a. That's actually one of the only ones we would ever agree to have a three-way. John Malkovich. I'm tossing him. Yeah, he's made some turds. Uh, yeah, I'm not making. I'm not using my veto on John. Okay, I need just to list. Con Air Red and Red 2. Yeah, no, it's just poor Although decisions. I, enjoy, I, and, I enjoyed them, but... Yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, no I'm going to go no. So, Willem Dafoe, I'm going yes. He is mesmerizing. Yeah, he's always entertaining. Yeah, I got to go, yeah. Although, William H. Macy would have taken him out in that movie. Whatever. <laughs> we didn't see. Uh, Max von Sydow. Yeah, he's, Absolutely. he's a Absolute god. Absolutely mesmerizing. Gregory Peck. Well, see here, I kind of have a problem. Uh oh. He's got a I mean, problem. I like him a lot. All right. But he hasn't made a lot of movies. He's not movies. lately because he's no, dead. I mean, he's dead. Whole, last like forty years, like yeah. all of his stuff is from the like, forties and because he's been dead for a long time. <laughs> no, it's just like he doesn't have a, a huge list of movies. Uh, like yeah, he won the Oscar for Kill a Mockingbird. Yeah. Uh, the Cape Fear was good, Roman Holiday, but yeah. I don't know. Okay. I mean, I, I'm not. I don't want to take him off. Well, it's like you I, have a choice too. Are you saying yes? Mesmerizing. Yeah, well, I can leave him on. I guess. I, I just watched The Omen again. Yeah. And See between that? him and Damien, it yeah. was a mesmerize off for sure. There you go. He was mesmerizing. Okay. Right. Philip Baker Hall. Yeah, I had to look this guy up. I didn't know who he was. He's like the most mesmerizing yeah, actor. Yeah, no, I recognize him now. Yeah, he is. He is. I can't take my eyes off this guy when he's yeah, on screen. I don't know. See, I've seen him in, in TV shows, too. It's okay. <laughs> so, so what say you? What say you, Jim? You seem to be like not saying anything. Oh, well, I'm just, I'm just sitting back and enjoying this ride. Yeah, I, I thought find him very mesmerizing. Okay. Yeah, right. Name okay, good, because that one I would have used my. And thank goodness I don't have to. Okay, Toshihiro Mifune, mesmerizing. I absolutely have to abstain. Yeah. No All idea right, he's staying him. on. He's on. Couldn't even find him in IMDb. <laughs> Sid Haig. Yeah, that's that's a no-brainer. Well, for me, I don't know about Murray. It's, yeah, it's, again, never heard of him. Okay, perfect. Abstain. <laughs> Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah. He's mesmerizing. He's, yeah, he was. And now he's dead. Now he's dead. He is. Brian Cox. I could uh, see him go. I, I don't think so. I'm going to say I, let him go. I just saw X2 today, this afternoon, because it was on TV. Oh. And I'm like, he's also in the He two, was, he was he, the he's original also, Hannibal Lecter. He's, he's also in the two red movies as he's, well. He's got moments of greatness. I'll give you that. Okay, but fine. I think Move I could on, take him okay. off. Brian Cox is gone. That one's a little painful for me. Well, he's still got a veto. <laughs> I'm not using it on Brian Cox. Me? No, I'm not. Benicio del Toro. Oh God, he's so mesmerizing. He's a. He's something, all right. He's mesmerizing. Is that a yes, Murray? Yeah. All okay. Right. Robert Jim's Duvall. Only person voting here. Jim's. On I. Heads. I. The one that just said he's mesmerizing. Robert, I said he's a god. Robert Duvall. Gone. Okay, there you go. Ooh. Bye, Allison Janney. She's mesmerizing. Absolutely. All right. She can stay. Nicholas Cage. <laughs> oh, God. 
Murray, you gotta, you're the one that has to speak first, Murray, because it's going to be you. What, every time? Mostly. They mostly come at night, mostly. Well, the last few movies he's made, I have not enjoyed. Yes, but was he but mesmerizing? I will say he is always the best thing about them. All there right. you go. I say yes okay, But well. he chooses some real crap. Yes, things. he does. Isabelle Huppert. Oh, my God. She's so she good. She is so oh, good. Friggin' clue. Well, she is mesmerizing. Uh, Stephen McHattie. Oh, God, yeah. I barely know who that is. Canadian Joy right there. Yeah, he's, he's our Canadian content. He's our only Canadian? No, he's got no, no, I, We got some more, but he's he's uh, he's bringing up. I love how you're going to have to pronounce this because you never do it right either. But of all people, it would be you that could pronounce it. Dijamon Honsu. Dijon? No. Dijamon Honsu. Dijamon, maybe? Dijamon? Dijamon Honsu. I don't know. He's, he's, Anyways, he's yes. mesmerizing. Just from Murray. the size alone. Murray? Yeah, whatever. Okay. I'll He's abstaining? No, I've seen these movies. I just... All you right. Vinny Jones. I find him mesmerizing always. See, the three movies that are on here, I have not seen because they're all... Well, one's a horror movie. Hey, it's right here. It's with your guy it's a, it's a, it's a I just bought that. Right I just me. bought that. By I the way. just know him from Gone in sixty seconds, where he doesn't even talk the whole movie, so. ah. and yet he was still mesmerized. That I'm actually, true. I'm actually turfing Vinnie Jones. He's gone. What? Jones oh, sorry. Is gone. How can you say that? Okay, That's the way that. it goes. Because this list has to get low enough. I'm looking at these other names. He doesn't. He doesn't match up. Chris Cooper. I say yes. Yeah. I'm go, I'll go yes. Yeah. yeah I go with that. Maggie Smith, I say F yes. For sure. Yeah, I do F yes too. Okay. Motherfucking yes. Same with Bill Nye. Okay, we the, are the acting guy. We're on to page two. <laughs> Man, this is a long list. Two of three. Bill Nye, the acting guy. He's totally mesmerizing. I will always remember Shaun of the Dead. There you yes. go. Yeah. Sally Field. Hell yeah. Um. Ooh. Give or take. I do love her. Yeah. I think she's done some amazing. She's an Academy Award winner. Mm-hmm. I think she's fantastic. Mm-hmm. But I have seen movies of her in. Mm-hmm. Even going back recently, mm-hmm. I'm going to say I would take her off. Okay. I would leave her on, but you right. have spoken. I'm just saying, I've seen a couple I'm movies of her uh, in that I'm not loving her in. Jeff Gold- Goldblum. Well, yeah. <sighs> I think you... I was... Jeff Feel. Goldblum is mesmerizing. No matter what movie he's in, his personality. Yeah, is he was. He still is. Mm. He was pretty good in Thor. That's right. He's okay in Thor. You know what? Jeff Goldblum always shines over everybody else that's around that's him. Right. That's for sure. I gotta say, I'm, I would say, yeah. Yes. I'm. Sk- I'd keep him on. Mm. Well, if you want him off, Murray's probably going to use his veto. Oh no! <laughs> I know what I'm using my veto on. Right? Okay. Yeah, no. Well, he's he's still on. Michael Caine. I just saw a Michael Caine movie. Yeah, I could go do without Michael Caine. Yeah, uh, based on his last movie. Yeah, uh, I didn't even know she was. It was in with uh, what's her head? Uh, that uh, that, uh, that girl that has the face and the two ears. Oh, that one. Yeah, her face and ears yeah. are always. <laughs> pl- no, it was. Um, what's that movie called? Or what? What was her name? She she uh, she's been at Cuff a few times. Um, she's like in quirky comedies a lot. No idea. Aubrey Plaza. That's it. Yeah. Aubrey Plaza. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the one with the face and the ears. Yeah, the, <laughs> with the face and the ears. <laughs> Anyways, he wasn't that great in that. Yeah. All right, so All Michael Caine's right. gone. Goodbye, buddy. Uh, I love Aubrey Plaza. She's kind of, she's great. Yeah. She's very good in it. She, yeah? Movie was okay. Yeah? What was it called? I don't know. It was, uh, it was play- we should Mo- we should have been pumping the tires of it because it was playing at uh, that uh, Canyon Meadow Cinema. The Black Bear was it? Black Bear? No, not Black Bear. Oh, which one was it? It was like writer or something about writer or something. Best sellers. Best sellers. That's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Is it still playing there? Do you know? I don't know. If it is, I can't remember. Go see it. It's, see good. It. it's good. She's very good. Yeah. Michael Caine. Yeah, but she's good. <laughs> Sorry, where were we? Oh, yeah. We're at Leonardo DiCaprio. Leonardo DiCaprio. I'm taking cra- crappy off. Really? I am. Wow. Okay. I, don't get me wrong. I like him, and I think he was the best thing. Brutal. In, um, All right. Get, get done. Whatever. He's no, gone. No one wants to protect him. There you go. Apparently, not, you didn't I'm love not, him I'm enough not, to use your die, veto. I'm not going to die on that cross. No. Uh, Forrest Whitaker. Yeah. yeah, he's. I find him mesmerizing. I find him mesmerizing. Okay. <laughs> That's not a no, I guess. 
Uh, w- <laughs> Wanda Sykes. Hell yeah. Hell she's yeah. mesmerizing. Oh, God, yeah. Do I have to use my veto on this? Well, we said, yeah, no, you can't veto to take them off. <laughs> we can veto to keep them on. But if you say no, you're forcing Bryce or I to use our veto oh, now. Yeah, yeah. I know, I just... If I, you don't, Marie, then you say it. I find her funny, but she hasn't made enough movies. Oh, well. well like, what does that mean? Mo- Monster-in-Law, Bad Moms, Clerks 2. Yeah, I know. Oh, Clerks, Clerks 2. Movie she's, made. she's in line up with her she's husband in Clerks TV 2. Oh, it's so star. funny. They're waiting to get some fast food, and the banter is just yes. priceless. She's not a movie star. Uh, right, but is she mesmerizing? Murray, you can. You, you can, have the right. You no, have she, the right, or she you is, can. But she's not a movie star. That's you can abstain because you haven't seen no, enough. No, I have seen these. I okay. just don't think she's so, mesmerizing. Then say it. So, Bryce, are you using your veto for Wanda Sykes? As a movie star, she's not mesmerizing. What does that mean? Because she's. <laughs> Because she's a TV star and she has stand-up spells. She's a stand-up comic. Yeah, but she's in movies. She's when she's the in movie the movies, she's in are when terrible. She's, when, yeah, but when is she's she in the movie, is she the most mesmerizing thing in it? No. All right. Well, I may use my veto on that one. I'm going to see what if I, oh, yeah. what I have to save it for. Okay, we're going to have Possible. a. We're going to come back to Ben Kingsley and Wanda Sykes so far. Yep. Okay, Russell Crowe. Gone. Gone. No. Oh, yes. using your veto? I'm using my veto. Oh, you're using your veto. Damn yeah. right I am. I already yeah. crossed him out. Too bad. It's too late. He's just used his veto. I would save, I I, save my veto for a picture. I crossed now. him out with a <laughs> smile on my face and too a smile in my heart. Because I knew you guys were, were going to take him off, and I don't want him taken off. <laughs> All right, I wrote I him back it. in and he's, put a check mark by him. He's on for life, baby. That that's, was the rule. Yeah. <laughs> That was the rule. Nice. All right, Russell Crowe is now mesmerized for life. How the hell did that happen? Because you gave me a veto. That was your idea. Oh, that was yeah, the stupidest yeah, thing I've ever done. When you thought we'd have to save Viola Davis. <laughs> All right, Jodie Foster. Uh, Yeah. Sure. All right. Little darling. Oh, Barbara Kingsley. <laughs> I think we have to remove her only uh, because no. we've only seen her in one movie. Yeah. I who she is. She's gone. She's the most mesmerizing She's, she thing. She was lovely in that yeah. movie. Crispin Glover, absolutely. Absolutely. He's just a weirdo. Yes. I know. A deliciously, fabulously acting weirdo. Lon Chaney, absolutely. Yeah, I gotta go. Yeah, and Lon Chaney. Have you seen enough Lon Chaney? This movies were 100 years ago. Of course I haven't. <laughs> okay, well, then Maybe you have you're to gonna abstain. abstain. Uh, William H. Macy. Of course. Of course. All right, of course. Uh, Peter Stormare. Oh, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Richard Jenkins, absolutely. Absolutely. Ah, Killian Murphy. I, 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 I don't know. really like him that much. I say we pull him. Yeah, gone. Killian Murphy's just been killian Ellen Burstyn. It's, she's a goddess, she even is. in that terrible movie. <laughs> that movie was so bad. <laughs> like, it was beyond <laughs> bad. I but all the, all the old ladies loved it. Yeah, they did. And even even the, uh, the, the husbands old, that they dragged the, along some with Some of the them. old fellas did, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, Ellison, Ellen Burstyn. Uh, John Lair... Uh, John Carroll Lynch. John Carroll Lynch, not, La- not John, John Lair- Lair- Kinch. Kinch. I'm saying yes. I'm saying yes. Murray. Yeah, sure. All right. Ver- TV star these days, but whatever. Veronica Cartwright. Oh, I love her so much. No idea. Yeah, I gotta say yes. I'm saying yes. Coleman Domingo. Wait, you forgot Lupita Nyong'o. Did I? I don't have it on my uh, list. On my list. It's on the our website. Did so whatever it? your printer didn't work. All right, she is absolutely mesmerizing. Yeah. Yep. And you forgot. Uh, Marianne Jean Baptiste, ah, which also is also mesmerizing. Okay. Okay. Now we're caught up to date. Perfect. So, Coleman Domingo. No idea. I'm thinking we could pull. Yeah, pull him. Sean Penn. Yeah, he's mesmerizing. I'd love to say no here, but it's not going to make a difference. Why? I also like him. Oh, okay. Yeah, but what do you think of him as an actor? Okay, he won a movie for Mystic River, and he was the worst thing in that movie. Okay. That movie should have been, the, the Oscar should have been given to Tim Robbins. Okay. But he, it was a horrible performance. Not, he wasn't mesmerizing at a, all. Okay, so what are you saying, Murray? No. Are you saying no? No. So he's gone. 
Oh uh, wait, I might hold my veto. Oh, so oh. we gotta have some vo- okay, vetoes. We're gonna, we're gonna revisit Sean Penn. Yep. James Stewart. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Michael Stuhlbarg, absolutely. Yeah, me no too. Idea. Michael Ironside. Canadian oh, content. All right, he stays. He stays. John Hurt. Absolutely. Ray Fines. I could go no on yeah, Ray Fines. He's gone. I was just trying to make a Bond movies. June Squibb. Oh, she's she's, she's a freaking right. goddess. She is. Christian Bale. Uh, I don't know. I could do gone. without Bale. Diane Weist. Okay, we've got Jeffrey Rush, but he's on there twice. That's why I took him down the first time. <laughs> then it's Diane Weist. Yes. She's absolutely mesmerizing. Mm, I'm getting rid of her. Okay. I'm not going to save her. What's that? I'm not going to save her. Perfect. Alan Rickman. Yeah. Okay. John Goodman. Yes. yes. Yeah. Will Patton. Yes. Yes. Right. Idris Elba. Absolutely. Yeah. Viggo Mortensen. 100%. Yeah, yep. sure. Tigna Taro. She's so good. She's so good. So is that no? It's fine. Murray, it's, it's got to be mesmerizing. I've seen her in one freaking movie. She's a stand-up comic. Yeah, but she's also an actress. Keep putting stand-up comics on here. They're also they're in movie movies, stars. and they're mesmerizing. Yeah, she was all right in Army of the Dead. Yeah, she, she, was, was, mesmerizing. she was mesmerizing. Harvey Keitel's a yes. <laughs> Harvey Keitel, yes. Yes. Tom just, Wilkinson's a yes. Just for Mr. Wolf alone. Yep. Uh, Tom Wilkinson is absolutely yes. Yep. All right, we're uh, down to the last few. Paul Walter Hauser. Yeah, that's a yes for me. He's, you know, he's the one that kind of sneaks up on you where you're like... Creeps up just like the it's underwear. Like, but it's like, wow, this guy is just so mesmerizing. Everything he's in, it's like, wow. Yep. Uh, Clifton Collins Jr. is a is absolutely a yes for me. Yeah. No idea. Aquafina is absolutely a yes for me. I that's no absolutely. Again, make a difference. Wait, you Murray, Murray. That's not the point of okay. this this no, exercise. So no. if you're saying she's not, she's, you sorry said no. I did not like her. Did not find her memorable at all in the Shang Chi thing. Okay, but, so then you're saying no. I mean, put well, a star by her. I mean, we got to review we the we stars. Will revi- will revisit one her. Of the few. Sam Rockwell. Of course. Yes. Yeah, you'll say yeah. Dev Patel, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, I want to say no. To Dev Patel? Yes. Okay. okay. Then we'll revisit that one too. Don't don't waffle. If you're saying no, saying no. We're trying to bl- eliminate. Because well, the- you guys have, have seen everything these guys have done. Okay, been so I've then like say abstain. You're confusing me, Murray. Yes, abstain. Well, I did see him in Green Knight and I hated him in it. So. Yeah, but you hated the movie. No, he was him mesmerizing him. in it. Hey, Adam Driver. I'm sorry, is Dev sure. Patel gone or not? I'm I'm confused. No. no. Of course not. He's abstaining. He's only seen him in one movie. Okay. Adam, Adam Driver. Driver. Yeah. I'm saying yes. Yeah. Joaquin Phoenix. I'm saying yes. I'm also saying yes. Yeah, I don't like the guy, but yeah. And Bruce Campbell. Yes. Oh, Murray, you should have kept your veto. You might. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> no, I'm not taking Bruce Campbell off. <laughs> Prove to me he's not mesmerizing anything he's ever done. He's, he's, he's fantastic. Yeah, okay, he's on. All right, what do we got left? What do we got to protect here? Okay, so we got Aquafina. Mm-hmm. We got Sean Penn. Mm-hmm. We've got Wanda Sykes. Oh, my God. We've got Ben Kingsley. Mm-hmm. I think that's it. Just four? Yeah. Well, I'm willing to let Ben Kingsley go. Mm. So that leaves Aquafina, Wanda Sykes, I and... Uh, I haven't let him go yet. Just, I know, I'm just saying me. Right. So I have to choose between Wanda Sykes, Aquafina, and... Sean Penn. Sean motherfucking Penn. Who can I let go? Oh, my God. I can't let... I'm using my veto on Sean Penn. Wow. You've made my decision really hard, then. I know. That's why I jumped in first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... John Penn is now mesmerized for life. Oh. I am letting, and you- I am, I'm letting Ben Kingsley go. Okay, there we go. Which means... It was more I will, mesmerizing of these two people. I will use my two vetoes on no. Wanda Sykes and Aquafina. <laughs> you get one. I'm sorry. Oh, crap. Here's my thoughts. Can I help to influence you? Yeah. So I'm going to say that Aquafina hasn't been in enough movies yet. Wanda Sykes has a longer no, track record doesn't. of films. No, 
she doesn't. So, I think he should. I think he should use Wanda because maybe we'll get. Maybe Murray will fall in love with Aquafina in the same, future. To be I think they've both been in about four movies. Aquafina. The rest is so all TV good. shows. All right, Wanda Sykes is mesmerized for life. When I got onto this, doing this list initially, who knew I was going to use my veto <laughs> for, for Wanda, Wanda Sykes. Sykes? But she, I just, I am giddy every time she is on the screen. Oh God, yeah. And she's been in some crap. Oh yeah. But when she's on the screen. I'm having the best time of my life. And That's right. Nowhere I'd rather. Be. I love seeing the movie with her and Aquafina in it. It was great. Oh, <laughs> you're in the oh. same movie. Yes. Oh, the movie was bad. It was. They were. It was fan- okay. It was okay. It wasn't bad, but they were fantastic. They were. Oh, right. now I'm burnt out. This is like seven hours of talking mesmerizing yeah, people. We're, we're, we're well. All right, everybody, uh, go check out our revised list, which I'll be updating some point in the next week. Because it'll take me seven hours to program our website. <laughs> Unfortunately, in all that, we only uh, eliminated one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, maybe like 12 names. That's still pretty good. Eh. That's one, one page. I thought That's Murray right. was going to be ruthless, but he was... He was being he's, a little too he's kind, Mr. Well, I think. Mr. Walker here, I've never there. heard of. Mm. You guys put there him on go. and I wasn't here, so I had no opinion on him. He doesn't hasn't seen their movies. Fair enough. I don't wish We're to gonna turn him from being a TV watcher to a movie watcher. Nope, ain't gonna happen. <laughs> oh wait, last week on Rager Dare, Bryce pulled the controversial film Leonard Part Six from the Dare Bag. This week, it's a surprise for both Jim and Bryce and Jim as they have been dared to see a terrible film by one of our fabulous members. This time, there's no chance for anything but a rage. Check in with Bryce and see if he did or did not get out of that jello tree. Yeah, I, I had a hard time watching this. I there, know. I mean, I... There, there was like one scene when he's talking about young girls, and I was like, oh, God. Ugh. So anyways, Leonard Part 6 started with a weird montage of action sequences that were later seen in the movie. We got to see Bill Cosby doing ballet and in a high-speed car chase and then jumping out of an exploding building while riding an ostrich. Yeah, Sweet. That really happened. Then we got some guy telling us that Leonard Parts 1 through 5, the records of those have been sealed in the interest of national security. Oh my. That's funny. Isn't it? Then we got Bill Cosby acting out some food fetishes, which was very uncomfortable, as his female co-star smothered him in gravy and other assorted items from the menu of the restaurant they were at. Ooh. Yeah, that was kind of gross. Uh, and Dude, then it, uh, it just kept on getting dumber from there. This was a rage, and no one should ever have to watch it. And hopefully, no one else ever will. It is my hope that I am the last person... To ever watch the Leonard Part 6. Please, this is your public service announcement. Do not watch Leonard Part 6. Do not dare anybody to watch Leonard Part 6. Just let's not do it. No Leonard Part 6 ever again. This is the last you're ever going to hear about this movie, hopefully in the history of the world. And we won't repeat the name of that movie. Correct. <laughs> now, we were dared by our member, Philip, to see a film. What? Yep. We will be seeing the movie called The Red Maple Leaf. What the hell is that? It's a film, and we can see it on YouTube, I understand. And it's supposedly the worst movie that's ever been made. It sounds Canadian. It does kind of sound like it's Canadian. The Red Maple Leaf. Yes. Uh, okay. You don't believe that it's actually a I real thing? I, uh, whatever. I'm sure it is. You don't really have to prove it to me. I'm look. I want to now. I have to look it up. Yeah. Let's take this. Yeah. It was made. Episode, it was made. It as you sit there and plug it was away made in 2016. Okay. And it stars James Caan, Chris Christopherson. <laughs> Martin Lando. Oh, God, really? Paul Servino. Maria, uh, Maria, 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 Mira Servino. Wow. Wow, there's a lot of people in this. Okay, I don't understand. How are all these people in it? None of them have been in a movie for Paul like the last Servino's 15 years. She, she this was maybe the movie that they were in. 
Armand Asante. Armand Asante. Yeah. What is going on? Doris Roberts is in this. What Eric is Roberts Eric is in this. What is? Okay. What a is this? It's a crime drama mystery. Margot Kidder is in it. Wow. This I don't understand terrible. what's going on right now. I don't either. But yeah, supposedly you're, you're making up this cast. Obviously. I am not. That is not a cast. That's yes. in the Same film. And apparently got a Lori- five point one out of ten on IMDb. Yep. Uh, I'm confused right now. This looks terrible. A crime drama mystery. Yeah. It's one of our favorite mashup montages. It's true. It'll be awesome. I think it's going to be terrible. I think it's going to be good. Yeah. I'm well. going to have like nostalgia like crazy. I haven't seen any of these actors in 20 years. Yep. And there's probably a reason why. This was the movie that killed Walter their careers. Killed them. <laughs> this is the movie that killed their careers. Yeah. All right. I love Martin Lando. Who doesn't? He's almost mesmerizing. Almost. Because <laughs> he's not on the list. <laughs> he's not on the list. Okay. Well, thanks, Rage, for listening. Yeah. Super duper Rage love to our members, Julian from It Goes Down in the PM podcast, James and Philip for their continued support through moral and financial. Thanks to the Extended Film Rage crew of Leonard Conlon, Bex Goose, Tony, and Nat for their artistic contributions to our show. You can find their homes on our show notes. Thanks to our sponsor, Canyon Meadows Cinemas. Please go support your local independent cinemas because they desperately need your help. Apparently, unless the movie's Dune is playing. Find us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Film Rage YYC. Follow us on Adia at A-U-D-E-A dot I-O and search Film Rage YYC. Check out everything Film Rage at FilmRageYYC.com, including our updated mesmerized list, soon to be there. Uh, we are always wanting to make this a raging blast for our listeners, so please comment, like, and subscribe, and send us an email to FilmRageCalgary at gmail.com. Dare us to see terrible movies to fuel our rage, especially something like Leonard Part 7. But no matter what you do, please make us rage. Please. Pretty please. That's it for this week. Rage on. Ready, John.